Catherine Moy and this is my workshop in Nottingham. I spent a good part of the early summer last year, 2020, in peak lockdown, working on a project which was my response to the novel The Life and Opinions of Tristram Shandy by Lawrence Stern. Normally I make decorative and functional ceramics which are my interpretation of historical wares such as Delft ware and Italian maiolica, but every now and again I get a bee in my bonnet about an idea I've had and I indulge these things by working on projects and this novel was one of those things. I read this book a couple of years ago after a visit to Shandy Hall and I absolutely fell in love with it. If anybody could be said to have fallen in love with a book, this, is, this was what happened to me when I read Tristram Shandy. And I wasn't really sure why at the time, but I visited Shandy Hall a few more times over the intervening couple of years and talked to Patrick Wildgust, the custodian, and I got really excited about making a collection of work in response to the book. I knew I wanted to make a series of ceramic sculptures in the style of Staffordshire figures, which were coming into being in the 18th century, around the same time that Lawrence Stern wrote this book. But um, I, I found it quite hard to find my way in, actually, because this book is so full of different ideas and concepts and uh, just full of energy and different things happening. And that I just, I mean, it's notoriously difficult to interpret this book. And I didn't want to do straightforward illustrations of scenes in the book because that wouldn't, there wouldn't have been much point to that. So I had to try and narrow down my approach. So the planning stage was quite tricky and I thought that Stern might be laughing at me if he could see me with all these false starts and hesitations, uh, just like the beginning of the book, in fact. <laughs> and... Um, I just thought after writing loads and loads of notes and reading around the subject that I'll just bin all of that and then just think about what actually is it that I as an individual reader really like about this book. So that turned out to be quite straightforwardly. The warmth and the humour that comes through really strongly and the fact that I felt really closely engaged with the narrative because of Stern's habit of breaking the fourth wall and talking directly to the reader. So I felt really closely connected to this book because of that trick that he had. And this was quite a revelation to me because it gave me an insight into people's motivations and desires and habits and just the sheer silliness of the book made me realise that people have always been motivated by the same things and you know how when you're reading or learning about history you just you just hear about the important events and the movers and shakers and you don't think about people just being normal like we are today and so this was a real gift that this book gave me that I've got a different perspective on history nowadays which has really stayed with me so that's great. So what I decided to do was focus on the humour of which there is much in this book and specifically the dirty jokes and the double entendres and I was going to find nine double entendres to illustrate and the reason that I did nine was that there are nine volumes of the novel so you might think that's quite hard to find nine dirty jokes but actually no this book is absolutely stuffed full of dirty jokes and innuendo and some people actually say that this book is a massive exercise into describing male sexual anxiety so it was difficult to winnow down the nine ones that i wanted to do actually <laughs> so this one is an amalgamation of two dirty jokes actually in one piece and it's from chapter one of volume eight of the book and it's about a man being distracted in the job of planting cabbages in a field by a French peasant girl who walks past and she's got a slit in her petticoat. So uh, the quote is, I defy the best cabbage planter that ever existed. Whether he plants backwards or forwards, it makes little difference. I defy him to go on coolly, critically and canonically 
planting his cabbages one by one in straight lines because he's been so distracted by this sight of Nanette walking past with her petticoat. So the cabbages, as you can see, have all gone astray. And in the 18th century, this was news to me, but I was delighted to discover that the word cabbage was a euphemism for lady parts and <laughs> the word planting was another euphemism for making babies. So if you're planting cabbages, you're being very rude indeed. So that's what that's all about. So I was reading about um, attitudes to gender and the social history of the 18th century and how humour was something that was not a concern of women, but pretty much a male preserve. And I can kind of trace that all the way up to women comedians not being allowed on panel shows today and things like that. So I was quite pleased to realise that maybe I'm being a bit transgressive by being a woman and making sculptures of dirty jokes about this very, very male novel. And at one point in the book, Walter Shandy actually says that he would never let Mrs Shandy read a novel. He would only let her read the scriptures. So this was another moment where I thought, hmm, <laughs> I'm being a little bit naughty by making these sculptures. Also, at the, uh, around this time, Patrick Wildgust sent me a postcard. A lady goes into her daughter's bedchamber and discovers a novel underneath the daughter's pillow. And it's absolutely shocking. And there's a quote on the back from William Haley's The Triumphs of Temper, which says, beneath the pillow, not completely hid, the novel lay. She saw, she seized, she chid. With rage and glee, her glaring eyeballs flash. Oh, wicked age, she cries. Oh, filthy trash. So um, that really amused me. And I've decided to call this collection Filthy Trash. So that's the name of the project. And when I was getting to the end of the project, I got a bit diverted by Lawrence Stern's nose fixation, which is another euphemism for... I'm sure you can guess, but uh, I went on another visit to Shandy Hall and took a cast of Stern's nose from the bust of him that Nollikens made that's on display in Shandy Hall. And I took that away and made a large model of it to make another cast. And so I've got multiple copies of Stern's nose finished by hand. And I've made a limited edition of 25 of these, which are presented in a beautiful gift box with a large man's handkerchief. And I've also made a series of chamber pots because there's a pivotal scene in the novel where Tristram Shandy can't find his chamber pot and his lovely maid Susanna says, oh, don't worry, Tristram, we can take you to the window. And she opens the sash window and mayhem ensues because the sash falls down and accidentally circumcises poor Tristram. So my series of chamber pots are based on 18th century chamber pot shapes and they have Stern's nose inside and outside because I thought he might enjoy the scatological nature of the object and being so up close to it. And also I found a political chamber pot that had a 3D bust of Napoleon inside the base and uh, so the user could show bony exactly what they thought of him when they were using the chamber pot. All of this work will be brought to Shandy Hall and photographed in and around the house and then the exhibition in the gallery at Shandy Hall opens on Saturday the 31st of July for three weeks.